of the different factors of the path. The one that gets the least interest in Western Buddhism is right resolve, and particularly one form of right resolve, the resolve for renunciation, resolve for non-ill will, resolve for harmlessness, even though that might be difficult to maintain at all times. At least people most see that it's a good thing. Whereas the resolve for renunciation, a lot of people have trouble even seeing that as good, much less giving it a try. But according to the Buddha, it's the first reaction to hearing about the Noble Truths. You realize that suffering comes from things that you're doing, and many times are things you like. So you realize you have to give up some of the things you like if you want to stop suffering. That comes hard. We like to think that awakening is something you can simply add on to all the pleasures of life. That it somehow makes the various pleasures of life even better. You taste the raisin more intently. You appreciate the cup of tea more, more deeply. But raisins and tea are sensual pleasures. And renunciation is about giving up your attachment to sensuality. Not just the pleasures, but even more deeply, your fascination with beautiful sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tactile sensations, things you would like to have. And you can spend long hours thinking about different fantasies about what you would like. But there's nothing there. The Buddha compares it to a dream. You're in a dream, and you see beautiful things, and then you wake up from the dream, and they're not there. But more than that, to gain the central pleasures you want, you often do unskillful things. And then if you have something that somebody else wants, well, they're going to try to take it away. That's another one of the, the images. A hawk is flying off with a piece of meat, and other hawks and vultures and crows come and try to tear it away. So I have to see that giving those things up is a good thing. Now it helps to have a good solid grounding and concentration. So you have an alternative. As the Buddha said, you can gain insight into the drawbacks of sensuality, but if you don't have this alternative pleasure, you're just going to keep going back to your old ways of feeding off of sensual thoughts. So take something here in the present moment that's not a sensual pleasure, but is a pleasure, the way you breathe. And if you're not sure that the way you breathe is a pleasure, try holding your breath for a while. Then finally, when you can't hold it any longer, you start breathing in, and the in-breath feels really good. This pleasure is called a pleasure of form. It can be very intense. If you sit with it long enough, but it's still a pleasure of form, it's not sensuality. And it gives you a place where you can look at your sensual pleasures and ask yourself, do I really want those? When you're hungry, everything looks good. Everything looks like food, in fact. But when you're not hungry, you begin to distinguish, oh, this is food, this is not food, this is good food, this is bad food. This food may taste good, but it's going to be troublesome as it gets down into your intestines. You can see these things a lot more clearly. So this is one of the reasons why we come to meditate. Now, simply meditating, getting the mind into concentration, will not be enough to go past sensuality. Even with this pleasure, it's very easy to go back, because our attachment is very deep-rooted. This is where another quality has to come in, which is tenacity, realizing that even though the mind may slip back, that's not the end. And even though the mind may really not want to give up those things. 
It's not always going to be that way, but it takes persistence on your part that you're going to stick with this, stick with this, stick with this. And again, the pleasure of the concentration, when you get it, will help. The question always comes up, how can I have more patience? Quickly, tell me now. And of course, you have you learn patience by developing it, but you learn patience by finding out where your skills are, where your where your strengths are. You may be weak in some areas, but you've got your strengths, and those are the things you lean on as you try to develop more persistence, more patience, more tenacity, more endurance. If all you can think about is are the things that weigh you down, the things that are difficult, they get overwhelming. When you remind yourself you've got your strengths, you hold on to those and build on those. And even though the difficulties may be just as difficult, the mind is not overwhelmed. Years back, someone went once asked me, what was the most difficult part of being in Thailand? And I had to think and think and think. And I couldn't think of anything, one thing in particular that was most difficult. But then I also realized the fact that I couldn't think of it was a good sign, because I hadn't focused on the difficulties. They were there, and I felt them. But I never let them overwhelm me. I decided that this is what I wanted, and I found that by making the breath interesting and making this whole question of how I relate to the breath energy in the body a puzzle, and a puzzle that I was constantly interested in, constantly learning more things about, that kept me from focusing on the, on the difficulties. So try to find something in your meditation that you find continually interesting. After all, it is your mind. It's the way your mind relates to your body. That's one of those issues that nobody has ever really written a book about that's fully exhausted the topic. How is it that we have this physical body and you have this mind? And they're related, but they're different things. What is that relationship? Why does the mind come in and enter and lay claim to the body? How does it do that? These are things that should be really fascinating, because they lie at the very core of our being, what we sense that we are. And that's our big problem, what we sense that we are. That's one of the big obstacles, deeper even than sensuality, that's going to lie in the way. Why we want to identify. What does it mean to identify? How do we do it? How do we let go? Because as the Buddha said, once you identify with something, you become a being, and a being has to feed. And as you start feeding, you're going to get into conflict with others. And even when you're not in conflict with others, the simple fact that the mind keeps needing to feed again and again and again, and that's on top of the body's need to feed again and again, that's a burden. Is there some way that we can learn how not to have to be a being and not be afraid of being annihilated? That's a question you can look into as well as you get deeper and deeper into the relationship between the mind and the body, or the mind and its own, its own actions. So there's a lot to see here. If you get bored with a meditation, that's a sign you're not really looking, or you're not really asking the right questions. You're not paying attention. If you pay attention, you begin to realize that even as the goal is not doesn't seem very nearby, there's a lot to learn about your body, a lot to learn about your mind. 
This is one of the luxuries of having a place like this. We don't have to spend all our time worrying about or making money and all the other worries of lay life. We've got the luxury of time. So take advantage of that. There's a lot to learn here, even though we've given up a lot to come here. The trade is more than worth it. When I was first ordained, the rules chafed a lot. Couldn't do this, couldn't do that. But then one day it really struck me. Well, with the rules, I've given this luxury of time. In fact, it seemed sometimes like I had more time than I knew what to do with. But in the modern world, that's a rarity, and it's a real luxury. You don't just simply wallow in the luxury, learn how to make use of it. You've got the time, you've got the opportunity, you've got the solitude. Time to look inside, to get to know yourself well. Ask yourself, why are you feeding on sensual thoughts? Why are you feeding on your sense of who you are? What are you getting from it? Is there some way to go beyond it? These are really fascinating questions if you get into them, and they're really worthwhile as well. So renunciation is a trade. It's a trade-up, if you do it right.